part of meditation. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Health and Wellness in Bayonne show. I am your co-host, Dr. Mike Akinfora. I have my fabulous co-host, Kathy Pacifico. Kathy, how are you today? I'm doing really well. I'm excited awesome. to be here today. Awesome. Uh, today we have a real treat. We have Heather Marr. Heather is a yoga instructor, amongst yes. other things. Um, if you would like to uh, find out more about where we are, you can look us up on Facebook at the... Uh, Bayon Wellness. Thank you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I need some meditation. <laughs> You're in the right spot. I am. So we're on <laughs> Facebook at the Health and Wellness in Bayonne show. So, Heather, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you. Wonderful. Now I'm excited to really kind of dig in a little bit on your passion with yoga and kind of sharing a little bit about your journey, um, how you got involved in best field of mind and body. body. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I originally approached yoga uh, just from a physical workout aspect um, and I used to pra I was afraid to actually go to a yoga class so I would do videos mm -hmm. at home every once in a while and there was a certain feeling after practicing yoga that I never had with any other form of exercise. And it was such a blissful state <laughs> yes. that I just kept bringing me back time and time again. And so I, I would practice here and there, but I was not consistent with it. And then I actually found a class and a teacher that I loved. And I started going regularly. And then my husband actually worked in the construction industry. And he fell, had a pretty severe accident. He fell 30 feet off mm. of a building and he broke his spine, he fractured his pelvis. Uh, wow. So we went through quite a journey of him recovering and being able to walk again. Sure. And uh, in the midst of that, my mom, my father passed away and my mom developed stage three breast cancer. And so in between wow. caring for my husband, I was also running out and sitting with my mom for chemotherapy mm. and just dealing with a lot of heavy life circumstances. And that's where I really found yoga and meditation to be my saving grace. Absolutely. It was a safe haven and it was a place to release stress. And without those tools, I don't know how I would have gotten through. Sure. Right? It really. What did you feel like you really took away, and what what brought you deeper into the practice? Um, for me, it was just being able to cope with everyday life and being able to handle the stress of everything that we were facing, mm -hmm. and being able to also face the unknown, right? Because really, at the end of the day, none of us knows what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Okay. And if we spend too much time focused in the future, too much time focused in the past, it's living with, I could have, I should have, I, you know, or when we project way out, it's like walking on tippy toes and you're always anxious. So mm -hmm. learning how to meditate was so powerful because mm -hmm. you're able to be and you're able to sit with everything that is. Well. And, and it just creates such a sense of peace. And it's, it's good for the body, it's good for the mind, and it's good for the rest of the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. So. so how long was it that you were involved in meditation when you decided to become an instructor? Um, I had probably now been practicing yoga for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it, it was such a passion mm. and I had originally worked in the financial world 
and it wasn't my passion. I didn't love it. I find I liked that hard to believe. You weren't yeah. passionate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I liked it, <laughs> but uh, I think when you do something that you really love and you believe in, and you know how powerful it can be, and how much it can help people and serve people and change their lives, you know, then and then you want to move deeper into that. Sure. And so that's what what brought me deeper into it. Love it. So, so you stumbled on it through some of your journey. How yeah. does somebody stumble on it? How did, what would be your way of <laughs> having somebody? Yeah. Um, I think for anybody who is just even slightly curious, um, you know, to, I would encourage them to seek out uh, places where you can go. There's many yoga studios out there mm -hmm. that um, to go to to learn how to meditate, to learn how to practice yoga. And I know your office is offering several different classes. Yep. So Kathy's uh, mm -hmm. fitness facility is as well. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, just to have have that opportunity for someone to open the door for you, and and then hopefully for most people it'll be a beneficial experience. Now, could yeah. anybody uh, do yoga? Anybody can do yoga. Um, not all yoga classes are appropriate for all people, mm -hmm. um, and I do recommend for people to start with the basic class or beginner class. Okay. Um, oftentimes people don't like to do that. They want to dive right in, right. Um, but it's important to learn alignment, I think, properly mm -hmm. and have a good foundation that you can build off of. So um, I do recommend beginner classes to students, and I still myself take beginner classes and basic classes because I don't think you can never know too much. Absolutely. You know? So they're, they're always a good starting place and they're always a good place to go back to, to sure. just reconnect and, and touch base. Absolutely. So is, is there different types of meditation? There are different types of meditation. Um, I personally practice mantra meditation. Okay. Um, because there, there are various types of meditation that you can do, and for some people, certain styles immediately help people be able to focus and mm -hmm. settle their mind. Um, there is a form known as uh, mindful meditation. Mm -hmm. There's uh, kind of a loving kindness meditation. Um, there's gratitude, where you can sit, and, and all those are very powerful. Um, for me to be able to focus my mind and quiet my mind, um, because it's it's I, I'll, similar to being on top of the ocean, right, and having the waves, and my thoughts are all over the place, and there, I mean, it's you know, I should be at the food store, I should be here, I need to go pick up this, I have to get the kids, <laughs> so you're all over the world, and um, by having a single point of focus for the mind. It helps quiet the mind, and so here's the top of the ocean and the waves. And as you use a mantra, uh, so similar to a mantra could be just let go. So when you inhale, you hear the sound of let inside your head, and then you hear the sound of go on the exhale. So inhale, let, exhale, go. Then the mind starts to become more focused and quieter, and then you start to dip below the surface of those rougher waters. Right, and the deeper you go into the ocean, the quieter the water is down below. And so it's like being able to go deep. And what'll happen is if you follow your mantra and you start to dive down, all of a sudden you'll notice the mind starts to wander off, here comes a thought, and then you're off and running in a different direction. And when you notice that, you just bring yourself back to your mantra or your word and then you start to follow it again and then the mind starts to be a little quieter and then hopefully this time you go a little deeper than you did the time before and then you'll notice you'll come back up and then you just start to dive back down and then you just okay. come to a place that's very very peaceful and very quiet and very soothing um, and it helps to lower blood pressure it's good for the heart rate um, it's good for anger um, I've done some training and work with veterans, mm -hmm. and it's incredibly powerful. And um, there is a, a group called uh, Veterans for, for Yoga, founded by a man named Daniel Libby, and he's a psychiatrist with okay. the military. Um, and That's he works with the, 
the veterans and using these techniques. Yep. Yeah, so. That's fascinating. Yeah. PTSD. Yes. Mm. How do you get somebody to that place where they can let go. Be let go. I mean, you did share <laughs> how your mind wanders, and so often, I'm not sure if it's the industry I'm in, because people are so active, and they, and I know myself, it was very difficult for me initially to kind of let go, yeah. because your mind does race. And So they say that um, if you don't have time to meditate, mm -hmm. you actually need meditation. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so as I close my eyes, breathe, <laughs> <Yeah>. I anxiously <laughs> attempt to let everything go. Let but go. I, like, what would be your so tips on three easy steps? Okay. Do you want to try it? I would love to sure, try no, it. Sure, let's go. Okay. So first step is choose your seat. Okay. Right. So um, for people at home, if you'd like to sit in a chair, mm -hmm. you can also sit on the floor. Okay. Um, oh, if you on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> if you no, sit on the floor, <laughs> it's also nice to sit on either a cushion, a uh, block. It allows your knees to come a little lower than your hips. and. Gotcha. allows you to lengthen out of the lower back. Okay. And now once you've chosen your seat, commit to your seat. So try you not commit. to fidget. Mm. Try what not to move. Mean? What does commit to your commit. seat Commit. Make that commitment to yourself. Okay. That you're going to take you know, these five minutes and you're going to sit here. And then once you've chosen your seat mm -hmm. and you're committed to your seat, and so that means you know, not kind of playing with your hair, or your ears, or you know, just committed to that seat. Mm. Then close your eyes. Okay. Okay. And now just begin to feel your breath moving into the body and feel your breath moving out of the body. And not forcing or manipulating your breath in any way, but just allowing yourself to be. And allow your eyes to soften. Allow your jaw to soften. Mm and even allow the tongue to soften. And as you watch each breath moving in, and each breath moving out. And then when you notice the next breath moving into the body, hear the silent sound of let. And when you notice the breath moving out of the body, hear the silent sound of go. So inhale, let, exhale, go. Inhale, let, exhale, go. Inhale, let, exhale, go. And your mind may begin to wander off and when you notice your thoughts wandering off and you've noticed that you've moved away from the breath, just begin to usher yourself back to the breath and then back to that mantra, inhale, let, and exhale, go. Inhale, let, and exhale, go. And so this is the meditation technique here that you can practice really any time. And if you're newer to the practice, I recommend maybe five minutes. I'm just committing to five minutes every day. And when you're ready, you can well, that was awesome. Flutter your eyes yeah, open. Yeah, I can see. It's funny because my coach has said, even if you take a walk outside of your building, go in your car, take yep. 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. He recommended 20. Sure. And it's in your brain. It's like, I don't have 20. You're right. Yeah. You need to find that time in the day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it, in a minute. You can f I can feel a difference already. Yeah. 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 And even, um, you know, for, for moms, if they're picking up their kids from sure. school, like while you're waiting, you get there a little bit early. Yep. Take five minutes, turn off the radio, put your cell phone down, mm -hmm. close your eyes. Right. And just inhale, let, exhale, go. That's brilliant. Yeah. So w what I noticed when we were doing this is breath work's really important yes. in, in the practice. Could you talk about that a little bit for us, Heather? Yeah, because sometimes so people don't know how to breathe. Yes. Yeah. You know, even well, if you get choked up a little bit, I'm <laughs> sorry. Yes. 
And, and in the practice of meditation, um, and there are various types of meditation that you don't always have to watch the breath. Um, okay. For me, that's been the most effective and the most powerful, so that's what I lean towards. Um, and really, when you think about it, our breath is a direct reflection of everything going on inside of us at all times. Brilliant. Right? So Love that. When you are anxious, mm -hmm. right? When you are nervous, your breath becomes short, your breath becomes shallow. Mm -hmm. um, when we're happy, like we have a very different breathing pattern. Mm -hmm. And so when we can start to control the breath, then we can start to control the fluctuations of what goes on inside of our heads, right? Um, most of us right now um, are kind of drawn around like a, a, a horse and carriage, and the horse is kind of Horse and carriage, cat. Come on. It's dragging me all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful metaphor. <laughs> and so when we can... Um, I was wondering if she's going to work that <laughs> in. <laughs> When we can pull the reins back, <laughs> <laughs> when we can start to realize that we're in control and we can control the mind, then we can create our own peace. And then that way, um, it's like being at the center of the eye of the storm, right? Where okay. they say when you watch the hurricane maps, and the center is actually the quietest place mm -hmm. to be. Um, so you're not living on the periphery anymore. You're able to maintain your center, your groundedness, so that no matter what goes on around you, and Lord knows life is gonna throw us some curveballs sometimes, sure. you know, you're able to maintain the steady place, you know, and not get kind of tossed this way and tossed that way. How do you so. check yourself so that in the midst of that life coming at us, we know to remember and even begin to practice that even more mm -hmm. so. It's I know it's habit forming. Sure. It is, is. is there a way that we could suggest people to begin that habit? Some of great it question. Is, is, it is a great question, thank you. Um, you know, part of it is just making a commitment to yourself every day, but also surrounding yourself mm -hmm. with other people that are like-minded, I personally find really helps. You know, people also that are committed to health, to well-being. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, really, at the end of the day, who we surround ourselves is what makes up our world, the people in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so putting yourself in situations where you're, you know, at, at a place where people care about health and well-being. So Absolutely. going to those yoga studios and going to the place of fitness, you know, because sometimes just showing up can be the hardest part of the practice, right? right? And getting right. yourself there. Once you're there, you're 90% there. Right. So just making that commitment to show up to your yoga class or show up to your meditation class or your Tai Chi class or your Qigong class, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, or your fitness class. So I love that. Yeah. Um, you could do this in classes. Mm -hmm. You can do this, as you said, with on, on a... Uh, watch it on TV. Yes, it can do that or, or yeah. tape. And there are apps. There's lots of mm. meditation apps now. Okay. Yeah, that's fascinating too. And they talk about sometimes a walking meditation. So if people are a little bit active and they work with mm -hmm. breath and meditation, I mean, I know there's a there's. I mean, there's, obviously, that takes yes. a little bit away from the walking meditation is beautiful, mm -hmm. um, and it's and it's a great way also to get your exercise at the same time. So if you even just five, 10 minutes. Right. Um, and just as you do a walking meditation, you don't talk, but just really start to tune into your own breath. Mm -hmm. And as you, it's interesting when you do it, when you step, your breath starts to sync with, with your footsteps, footsteps. Mm. as you do it. And it's a great way too, just to be outside and be in nature. Sure. I mean, you can do it in a city setting, but I recommend trying to get to a park or be outside in nature. It makes it more powerful. That's really cool. So. You mentioned mantra earlier. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means? So mantra, um, the word mantra is actually, it's a Sanskrit word. Mm -hmm. And it actually, ma is uh, mind, and tra means to transverse. Mm -hmm. And so you basically are using a tool to transverse, to cross over the mind. So a mantra is just really a word. Um, it is a word to help you in your meditation to move past the mental chatter. 
Mm. You know, because we all have this this inner right. conversation that goes on inside of us as we walk around throughout our day. Um, I know That's for scary. me, I, I my kids make fun of me because my mouth starts to move. <laughs> 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 They're like, "Mom, you're doing it again." <laughs> um, so That's funny. Um, so a mantra is just a word. It becomes a single point of focus, mm -hmm. and it's funny because you think. If we just focus on one word, you're narrowing yourself in. But actually, by creating that single point of focus, mm -hmm. you're creating just an incredibly broad world for yourself. So, if I just so my wife's mantra of mm -hmm. shoes would be a really good <laughs> word for her. Everybody should have their own word. <laughs> it's funny. Um, how about kids? Can kids do meditation? Kids can do meditation. Um, walking meditation for children seems to work a little bit better because having kids just sit down and sit still sometimes sure. can be a little more challenging for yep. them. They want to be active. Yes. Um, and uh, they should be active. Absolutely. So, um, so walking meditation becomes very powerful. But mm -hmm. as children do a walking meditation, um, having them repeat that word, whatever that mantra is, so let go, can be their mantra as they work, uh, as they work, as they walk. Mm -hmm. So, That's what right. other benefits do you feel people really take away from meditation? Like what? Why, at the end of the day, I know it, it why sounds... Meditate? Yeah, <laughs> why, why meditate? Yeah, why meditate? Why meditate? Well, part of the reason is your brain is a muscle. Right, and when we meditate, we are working the brain. You're working your muscle. Mm -hmm. um, it helps increase memory. It helps strengthen memory. Okay. Uh, it can help uh, ward off disease. Um, many studies have been shown to help with heart disease. Sure. Um, if you, one of the forms uh, that I practice is TM. It's transcendental meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, they have many, many studies on their websites about all the research that has been done. Yeah, there's um, a lot. There. There's a lot that's Huge out there. amount of research yes. done on all the health benefits, um, warding off disease and the heart and your organs. Um, when you meditate, you're changing your brain waves. Mm. And so we move from this waking state and mm -hmm. this mental chatter, and you're allowing your body to come into a deep state of rest that normally, even when we sleep, we don't go into that deep state of rest. And so you're not allowing your body to heal. And in meditation practice, you're allowing for your body to heal. So it becomes very powerful, not just for the body, but for the mind. Yeah, so. I, I read a lot about um, opening up more creative expression. Yes. You know, if you're in between, sure. uh, say, a lecture or yep. different avenues of your business to be able to go from one segment to another with yes. a 10 minute refresh. That's Almost what I wanted you to answer for us was that you don't have to go to a class. You could do this, like you said, sitting in your car yes. waiting for your kids yes. or mm -hmm. uh, in between this. And there could be different goals as well. Are there things, what's the, how, what am I trying to say? Um, like I'll do this at night using an app mm -hmm. before I go to bed because yes. I find that I sleep better. Yes. Now, whether it's the actual uh, act of meditating or it's changing the brain waves, I have no idea what that is. But there's different, I know there's different brain waves yes. doing different things. Yes. So what I notice is when I use this app before I go to bed, my sleep is phenomenal. Okay. And th that's one of the things that I've noticed. Does it have binaural tones? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, which is very powerful. Too. Yeah, that's yeah. just, and again, I don't know if it's the tones or it's the actual act or a combination of both. Probably a combination. Yes. Yeah, cool. I would think a combination. Yeah, I think for so. myself, I think getting through meditation most recently throughout my day as opposed to a morning or the mm -hmm. evening, which is also ways that I've attempted to do that. It allowed me to recenter. Yep. myself and, uh, yeah. and has allowed me to um, come back to my team, my family with better clarity, a yes. more present yes. you know, and more, like, our world is so frantic. We're going, yes. like you said, picking up the kids and doing this and yeah. we live in this pace. And no one's and, allowed to be. Yeah, like, we don't want to live so hectic and correct. frantic and, and so if we can take five minutes to yep. get that control, yeah. like you said, back yeah. in to our world, mm -hmm. it's astounding. I, I like the idea of making it a practice 
for me, morning's not my thing. So okay. I, I journal and write what I'm grateful for. But okay. at night, part of the rhythm of my day is to do this meditation at night. I like that. I like what Kathy's saying as well, that during your day, in the eye of the storm, you take this time to center yourself. Yes. And I think that has huge, huge For me, I think yeah. it's, it's been a ritual that I've practi I'm yeah. practicing as we speak. It's yes. kind of something that I committed to. There and have been studies done, too, that... Um, Actually, very interesting one. Uh, do you know about the one in, in uh, was outside of Washington, D.C., mm -mm. in Maryland? They actually brought in some Buddhist monks, and they had them do, um, I believe it was like a 30-day meditation, mm. oh. and the crime rate went down. Yes, okay, yeah. I did see that. Uh, that so was, um, I think I read that Lynn McTaggart yeah. did some of that work. Um, yeah. So, time's running short. Okay. And we have loved having you on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Do you want to tell the audience something? Leave them with something? Uh, I would say keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. Um, some people think that meditation is about blanking your mind, mm -hmm. and it's not. Um, we're thinking creatures. We're meant to think. It helps progress us through life and society. Um, so no one's able to just turn off your thoughts. So when you sit down and you start to notice all your thoughts, that's okay. Um, and that's what part of meditation is about, is starting to just become aware of the thought patterns. And so you're not becoming involved in them and letting one thought feed the next thought, but just allow those thoughts to come up, let them pass by, and just start small, you know, five minutes a day. Yeah. Whatever that. It's brilliant. Time we love you it. can fit in. Well, so. Heather, thanks so much for well, being on the thank show. Thank you for having really me. Really appreciate yes, it was you great. being on the show. I was excited thanks. to meet with you. <laughs> I am Dr. Mike Akinfora, and with my co-host Kathy Pacifico, we thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.